hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to revisit the Panther II, one of my all-time favorite tanks, one of the great what-if tanks in War Thunder and one of those tanks that reminded me that War Thunder can be one of those games that is one thing and one thing only, fun. And it's fun, not because it's overpowered and seal climbing, but it's fun because it's rewarding if you play it right. If you are an experienced tanker, if you know how to drive on a map and do your thing, it's just absolutely awesome. After having played ships for quite a while, you know, I enjoy ships, but from time to time you have to play something else. And there are still planes in for plane RB and also tanks in tank RB that you can enjoy. Or arcade if you like that. Or simulator. You see, diversity is a big thing in War Thunder. Many options to play your vehicle, and uh, we have seven nations. Soon the Italians come in. The Panther II itself will be uh, in the future hidden from being researchable. Currently, it has a battle rating of 7.0 as I'm recording this video. It will see a battle rating reduction to 6.7. And there are so, so many topics that I could talk about. From six, the very old 6.7 meta, where Germany just was the force, um, to balance and 6.7 being reforged or restored. Uh, I can compare it to numerous, numerous other tanks and can talk about balance and power creep and this and that but at the end of the day if you play this tank and you're coming back from high tier i for myself and this is a very personal opinion i love this tank when it works oh my god it's good i had so much fun like i didn't have in weeks and this is because this is world war ii technology where tanks and war thunder by itself are at their best you know, the early tiers, okay, it's a bit seal clubbing for me. Um, and then everything above 7.0, 7.3 is mostly post-World War, exceptionally 100 and mouse, but you get the drill. It's boring for me. But this tank, oh my god, is it fun. I personally had so much fun and I want to share with you some of the scenes that were hilarious, some of the scenes that were awesome. I want to talk about how to play the tank, how to be the unexpected threat and what makes this tank in particular so good without it being actually overpowered. And um, you know, when you look at just as a, just as a single, just as a single example versus the British. They have a higher rate of fire, they have APDS, they profit from the AP buff, they have a faster turret rotation speed, they have a stabilizer, uh, you name it. And um, for the Americans, they have so many light tanks with heat defense. Um, so the comparison could be endless. And yet this fun works because it has a damn long 88 and the mobility can get you to places where you actually can do the long range side shots. And God, is that fun. And, you know, the Panther II is not the only tank that can do this um, throughout the battle ratings, throughout the nations. There are multiple tanks like it. But this tank, this is the Panther II. And I think it has so much. I, I, I don't know the words for it. I think it has... It's a beautiful tank. It's a gorgeous looking tank, uh, you know, with the infrared camera on top and on the upper front of the plate and it being just a panther, which is one of the most beautiful tank designs ever. Um, and then the gun mantle that prevents your gun from being knocked out all the time compared to high tier. Okay, before I ramble on here for two hours, how much I love this tank and how fun it is, let me show you what I mean. So the first gameplay is actually a good idea in terms of how to use the tank's capabilities and um, this is now on the Cologne map or advanced to the Rhine. My target area is actually between A and C with a preferred direction onto C um, taking the fight to the enemy without them knowing what's actually gonna happen. But this is not the only reason why I want to show you this gameplay. The main reason is the ending, which is hilarious. And just a reminder for some of you, or a first for uh, the other part of you that are new to this channel, why my internet is the way that it is and why I don't stream. <coughs> Currently, the packet loss and the ping are all right. And you can see the Panther is really fast uh, in a straight line for a German 
World War II stylish tank. I dropped the artillery strike on C before it actually got captured so that I have now the smoke from the explosions and I can see uh, roughly how many tanks are in there. And now I'm behind enemy lines. I'm not spawn camping here, you know, because this is now around the objective. Um, I personally die way too often in caps to actually go for the caps themselves, but I love to kill the tanks. This is also a way to support your team. If you pull the teeth from the enemy team, so to say, um, they are a bit biteless. Talking about being biteless, watch this shot. M103 and um, the shell detonates in the middle of the tank. The driver doesn't get killed and uh, the commander as well. So to survive, so um, in this case, the M46 had to pay for it. Um, and then the M103 saw his situation and bailed out. And so I got a double strike. Now, I actually want to go to the very edge of the map, um, to that corner, because I expect enemy tanks to be there. And I, you know, on purpose do not drive through the cap to not give my position away, but it got decapped anyway. Don't ask me why it, um, but at least the enemy didn't get the notification that an enemy tank is in there and capping. So that's a little bit of a mind game. So there was no enemy tank. Maybe they got all balanced by the T-54-47 which was always my arch nemesis and always this tank that you wanted to rather have on your side than on the uh, enemy side. Um, strong Stalin Butri. And then I kind of have this um, attitude of let's follow this dude. Let's just see what we can do with two medium tanks on the flank of the enemy team. I leave C to be captured for the rest of my teammates. Um, I'm here for the kills. And so we can observe a T-32 uh, has murdered an object 120. Well, you know, normally I would approve that, but this is now where the object 120 was on my team. I'm still not quite sad. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is now the map design. There was no second option to go uh, now behind, see? Um, there is always this problem that then you would actually end up uh, in front of an enemy gun. City fights are something that I don't like. For a split second, I thought I would have seen there a tank, and now I choose the other direction. This is a very risky move because now my rear is exposed to enemy gunfire. Now there is the combat message T32 killed the T54, and there it is. And hello, sunshine. Good night, sunshine. And then, hello, sunshine. Can we talk a little bit about Taka Taka? And this is where you see the long reload. I could have used here a heat shell to hull break him, but um, his gunner was actually taken out, I think, because the commander is also the gunner on the Type 60. Uh, so, yeah, and now here it begins. Cap C has not been capped. So at this point, I think to myself, well, screw it. Now let's go for it. Again, I use here very efficiently the smoke shells and um, then I actually got hit here by an artillery strike. It looked at the very first moment like I got struck by the smoke shells um, from here my allied, but the name is differently. This is why I pressed J and um, yeah, now we captured and now I want to get a third man back into the tank. Um, I think this is so important for the gun handling, for the reload in particular. Funnily enough, my gunner is now un or unhurt or undamaged or uninjured or still healthy, whatever you want to call it. Um, and now the internet went wild. Do you see it? Ping. Ping spike. Massive. Still going on. And there you can see it in the reload of the smoke. And this ample is like, no, I actually stay staying, standing whatever and then you can see here the glitching and i'm like oh god this is not gonna end well for me this is not gonna end well for me um uh, okay what happened <laughs> and yeah yeah um yeah strong internet man get better internet Okay, jokes aside, here we are on Kursk, and there you can see a T-34 is looking at me. I'm wiggling my tank here a little bit, and stop in time. I pop a smoke shell. 
I got tracked and now a wonderful thing is happening called teamwork. Because the T-34 got, got killed by one of my uh, allies, I can freely repair the track and on I go. Kursk, one of my favorite maps, um, actually the favorite map, because the majority of people don't know the possibilities to actually flank around in plain sight, to have a bit more long range engagements. That was a bit too low lead um, and not enough lead, I guess. But there is this forest, there is the area around sea, and what I am about to achieve is one of those classic cases of the enemy team being blind and I abusing it. I have another video that is called The Dream in a T-44 where I get, I don't know, 11 kills, 13 kills, something like this, I don't quite remember. And um, yeah, I actually got the other way um, on this map. Um, and just killed the enemy team that was actually spawn camping their own spawn and just sniping um, And now we can observe this. They have no idea that I'm here up until they have to really think about this After a long 88 uh, Panzergranate has gone through their head, which is slightly painful. So that was this that is now my uh, kill on the FE4 202 and you can see I'm now getting between the enemy's spawn and the middle cap. Because the middle cap is like a magnet for the average player. Everybody's going there complaining about the large map being useless and then throwing themselves into a close quarters map without flanking, without using kind of those uh, valleys and hills and ridge lines, which is like magic. I love this. And again, it's like so exciting to see Kursk. Yes, Kursk something different not as damn city fight um so yeah that is my opinion i'm really excited about um, the footage that i can show you and hopefully you can understand why i still play war thunder it's because of battles like these it's because of maps like these it's because of tanks like these and there we got a fine clean shot into the super pershing the enemy tanks are giving their position away by firing and um, again, oh, that is a beautiful camouflage. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I'm a higher resolution. This is now an IS-2 with the Thunderly camouflage. And um, now he caught a uh, long 88, or at least a shell delivered from it. And then we see this tank here. Now that is actually a tortoise. I don't know why, but I saw many of those tanks recently, um, especially today. And we fire just a touch too high and then this shot happens we aim a little bit lower and let's trigger some british guys oh my god yes that was a one shot just mwah. when the ap cvc shell is just right like on this tank yeah that is another that was a t44 and that's already five kills multi-strike times four Let's see if we can take this a bit further. Okay. And goodbye sunshine. Six kills already. And then something happens that I am not sure what to think about this. A shell whizzed by, I think. Um, and now I'm really in a position where I think to myself, have I overextended? I'm playing with the thought of actually going uh, now to capture C. But on C, there is already a tank. And now watch the damage indicator. It points in this direction. So would you so you would expect to actually being shot at from there. But there was no shell coming in. And then it dawns on me. Maybe the shell indicator is broken again. An artillery strike is coming in. And then I saw the tracer from the river embankment or riverbed. And there he is. And now, um, yeah, the fire actually kills one of my guys and champs my turret ring in just a moment. There it is, together with the impact of the shell, actually. Um, so that is not nice. And I have to extinguish the fire. But again, the turret ring is jammed. I misclick, then I get shot from the other side. 47 seconds of repair, no way. I mark him on the minimap, but then I get killed by the Vickers MBT. Probably a revenge kill. Never mind, the damage was done, we won that game. And now observe how I use this tank like a super Hellcat. 
So some long-term subscribers of you might remember my tank review on the Super Hellcat where I just, um, you know, obliterated an entire German team consisting of Tiger 2s and Tigers and Panthers by actually doing the very same that I'm about to do here. So I'm going on this road. I tried to use here the, um, uh, yeah, I, by the way, I saw the FE 4005. Um, I use the speed and I don't care about the tanks that I see there, uh, you know, getting into a sniper position. The next thing was nearly my last engagement and um, I thought to myself, has this Super Pershing seen me? Yes, he has. And he actually bounces off from apparently my gun mantle. God, do I love it when a gun mantle is working. I don't want to exchange fire too long with here. Timing is important. Use your mobility. Don't go into unpreferable situations. He's aware of me. He has a kind of similar reload if I with my shot. And okay, he has a longer one, but I don't uh, want to hang around to find out. B is currently captured. I drop an artillery strike on me. If you are on the enemy team and you receive an artillery strike that early, a tank must be kind of nearby. So yeah, there is this. And there you can see I'm just behind the enemy front line before the enemy front line actually establishes itself. Talking about enemy front line, here comes a T-34 and there is another one and now I'm standing still. I just wait for him. I'm silent. He has no idea that I'm here and good night sunshine. Clean kill. And the question is, has the other tank noticed it? The answer is nope. Yeah, that is now a double strike. And those were two very potent tanks. It's act it actually was a T-29, so sorry about this. And then there is this beautiful, beautiful position. And I actually fit in perfectly with my camouflage, the color, and nearly also the height of the tank. So uh, I'm not, you know, having like a bright red Russian camouflage that says, Hello, comrade, can we talk about APAGBC? No, this is just simply waiting here. And don't overextend, don't push too far. Um, this is the most beneficial position. The enemy has to come around the corner, they nearly don't uh, expect you, and also everybody that wants to come behind you um, or uh, wants to flank you from behind actually has to say a word with your team about it because um, he then exposes himself to you know all the campers on my team and there you can see there are too many campers um, near the road where there is now the uh, ocean and um, then this happens I noticed noticed him too late but he misfired and then this happens yeah only only the cannon breach got hit and there you can see the painful long reload I had no chance of hitting him I now pop a smoke grenade and I know that he has hit me with machine guns so I might have popped up on the enemy minimap but if you're tunnel visioning you might actually have overlooked this like this enemy tank and that looks at like a t29 because he's missing the additional uh, plating here and he actually does me a favor in turning broadside on and thank you thank you very much fourth kill already um, beautiful and then again I go into this position because now the enemy tanks might just respawn or some of them have respawned and they expect me to be in this position but now I'm here and again I can chill here I can observe the minimap I can actually kill the most dangerous tanks of the enemy team they have to come around the corner they have to expose their side and against APHE rounds APHE BC APCBC, AP something uh, with a high explosive filler. This is very, very risky. It's almost like a death sentence. And um, yeah, I don't have to stop. I don't have to have a stabilizer. I don't have to have an auto loader or heat FS or APFS, SSFS, SSFS, DS. Doesn't really matter. This is a very good position. Why actually now, you know, overextend? Why? push more i just can wait i can chill i can wait up until the rest of my team actually pushes up so i'm not alone so uh, we are then in a multiple versus fewer tanks 
again increasing our chances and this is so important this is such an important lesson but now i think my team has moved up the enemy team doesn't show any sign of activity um, maybe it's all over again i should have checked here the stat card um, or the leaderboard rather how it looks for our team uh, versus the enemy team but now i see from uh, our spawn the our tanks are actually already pushing and um, yeah there are some tanks of our team nearby nice game mechanic very strong and realistic here that uh, single step actually stops this you know rather heavy medium tank um, it is actually pretty funny if you look on the uh, armor layout um, that the panther is in theory a bit similar to the t44 100 or to the t54 47 but the armor plates are usually thinner or as thick um, but the tank weighs more and the armor is um, you know used less efficiently now i thought the super pershing is gone but then he does some crazy reverse side scraping and offers me now another kill that's my ace and that's without spawn camping just by using the mobility having a plan and executing it and uh, this is all that you need to know about how to play the panther 2 efficiently and this is why i love this tank because it's not so much about the crazy gun you know it's it's a good gun the long 88 is a good gun but to actually bring it on target to actually hit it penetrate and then deal the damage that is always the question that the target 2 answers in exploding itself uh, so there is that the panther 2 gives you the mobility to surprise the enemy to do the unexpected you know maneuvers and uh, flanking um, and or counter the enemy flanking and this is how you can be kind of the first domino step that brings the enemy team to fall by killing their strong tanks from the side by killing their flankers and by just uh, prioritizing the targets and you can to a certain degree dictate the outcome of the battle now it's a bit strange if you get into an 8.0 match with helicopters and a crazy post-war stuff where you have to face stabilizers where you have to face APDS high rate of fire auto loaders tanks that profit from the AP buff and uh, have better armor and everything but still the tank just can kill stuff if you use it right and this is what makes it so much more enjoyable compared to high t tanks so it's just yeah just shoot APFSDS under the gun of the enemy tank before he shoots APFSDS under your gun, regardless in which tank you are. Uh, yeah, this is high tier Call of Duty gameplay, how we all kind of absolutely love it. Yeah, <laughs> so um, here I'm maneuvering around, trying to not get into the uh, red circle or, you know, trying to go into position where the red circle disappears. So I'm now no longer on the minimap. But I see some action going on. Maybe my panther, my yak panther is here in trouble. So let's just deal here with this guy. And uh, I love it. That's my sixth kill. That's a good result. So let's move on. Um, this is now where it's debatable. But what else is there now to do? So this is now a bit of a criticism on the gameplay itself. Um, that it is spawn camping but what else can we do we have the um, advantage we have all the capture zones we actually fulfilled all the priorities and all the you know objectives and now it's just wait up until the end of the game and um, why not just go here to the enemy spawn where the density of the remaining tanks is the highest on the minimap um, at least if somebody is not camping in the very back of uh, f1 or something crazy like this so the enemy team has some aircraft they have uh, uh, m50 ontos very dangerous tank um, six recoilless rifles with either hash or hdfs which is very enjoyable um, unless you're on the receiving end the kraken you know so i just wait and wait and wait yeah but basically i think it became clear in the commentary i love the panther 2 i think it's a fantastic tank it's very enjoyable it is um, just offering you 
a limited amount of tools, but tools that work very well. Yes, I just shot there a target 2P because why not? I saw something actually through the window. Never mind. Um, it has better reverse gear, much better than the previous Panthers A, F, and D, and G. But it is also massively more mobile um, than the Tiger 2s, including the diesel ones. And the long 88 is just good enough. The single shot uh, with the long reload combined with the mobility and although not having the best um, gun handling like very bad turret traverse for a medium tank of that battle rating no stabilizer no apds no crazy autoloader or high rate of fire like on the vickers um, mbt it, it just works and i think this is how war thunder just shows what it's capable of and where it's best at after that not many tanks actually are fun in terms of getting to higher battle ratings um, there are obviously some exceptions like the bmp2 and the warrior but that's just something different an entire different story so we survived the battle with getting seven kills and i think i had not activated any sort of civil line and research point booster let's have a look at um, what the result was seven clean kills no caps no assists uh, 47,000 civil lines and 5,800 research points and that for a normal tech tree tank um, I think this is very very good so I also got the survivor medal that is great but because I actually did just one shots um, we can see where I landed in the team I was just third with 1774 um, score points and the maximum got 2700 that was the Panther 2 in a revisit. It still got it. It's still an awesome tank. I highly recommend you to research and buy it before it got, uh, before it gets hidden from being researchable. I love the tank to bits. It's one of my all-time favorite tanks um, in War Thunder. Um, it's fun. That is what counts, and this is why I love it. That's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did share it with your friends, subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see each other in the skies, on the waves, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.